I'm going to be talking about the Tyco 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter. This converts 12 volts into 120 volts. And before I get started, let me go over what comes with the inverter. You get your ground cable, your pure copper wires for your hooking up your battery. Each one of these strands are 16 millimeters thick, and this is roughly 30 inches long. You'll get a remote control for controlling the inverter from a remote location up to 100 meters, and a user manual, and a very high quality wrench. USB-C port, two USB ports, the remote on and off switch, three 15 amp plugs, and a ground lug on the side. Now let's get this taken over to the bench, get it hooked up, and we'll talk more about it. And something I do like is that these are correctly sized for the inverter and for a battery. And this perfectly fits on the inverter and on the battery. Now that we have it hooked up, let's turn it on. In front of the screen, we can see a couple different things. The voltage, the state of charge, 60 Hertz, 120 volts, and the amount of power that's being generated. And before I start performing any tests, I do wanna talk about a couple things you might find useful. The efficiency of this inverter is 90% or better. So that is really good when you're talking about these power inverters. And the no load consumption is only two amps. So when we don't have anything hooked to this and it's turned on and connected to the battery, we're gonna be pulling somewhere around 24 to 26 watts of just idle consumption. And that's pretty good because I've seen these as high as up to six to eight amps on power inverters. And when I perform my test, we're only consuming 1.28 amps. And if you do want to use the remote setting, you'll have to go buy yourself a battery. And those are just a couple things I thought you'd want to know. So for our first test, we're going to run this heat gun and see what type of wattage we can get out of this. I think once we reach over 3,200 watts, this should shut down. I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to do that with that battery. Now it is rated at 6,000 watts peak, but that only happens for a very small amount of time before it will shut down. The 3,200 watts should happen for a little bit longer of a period of time. The 3,000 watts, now that should happen continuously. So I'm gonna do my very best to put that right at 3,000 watts and see if it will continuously run at 3,000 watts. So let's turn this on. Right now we're at 520, 530 watts. Let's turn this on high and turn the heat all the way up. We've got the fans kicking on and we're at 1480 watts. So we've got one heat gun running at 480 watts. Let's run the second heat gun as high as possible. And we've got that turned all the way up. So we're at 2660. I ran that for a little bit, but it didn't kick off because we're not over the 3000 watts. And I'm going to tell you, this fans kick on immediately when you turn something on with a large load and turn off immediately when you turn them off. So that's pretty, pretty cool that it does that because sometimes on these inverters, they get so hot that the fans have to continue to run afterwards. So I'm probably going to be challenged to get a, um, a sound meter on this to see actually how quiet or how loud it is. But I'll do my very best to get that. But first, let's... Go ahead and plug this in. Got this on at 600 watts. Now we're gonna turn the heat gun on. And that's on high. Now we're at 2,040 watts. We'll turn this one on. Now we're at 3,090 watts. And even after running that for a little bit, this is still pretty cool to the touch. The fans turned off immediately when I turned the load off. So I think the exhaust fans or the cooling fans are working like they should. I don't really feel any heat coming out of those and everything is still pretty cool. I'm actually worried that I'm going to overload the battery well before I overload this because I only have a hundred amp BMS in this and it will kick off at some point. My next test will be measuring how loud this inverter is using this sound level meter. And we'll get a decimal reading on that and I'll show you what that is. But I'm gonna be using these two old sandwich makers because they don't make any noise and they're burners. It allows me to put a load on this without disturbing the sound in the room to get a true 
meter reading on that. So let me get these plugged up, get the load turned on and have the fans kick on and we'll see what that uh, actual sound meter reads the decimals to be. And although it was running at 55 decimals, it was a little bit louder than what I would like for it to be. But most of these inverters are running over 60 uh, in these power inverters. We're lucky if we see anything in the 40s. So this is on probably on average, a same type of noise that you're gonna get out of any inverter for this size. And overall, this is one of the best inverters that I've tested, especially at this range at 3000 watts, that doesn't cause those heat guns to fluctuate in power. Sometimes you'll hear them go up and down. You can hear the power surging for the inverter to try to keep up with them. But with this one, I didn't get any of that. Plus the cooling fans kicked on immediately once it gets to a certain load and it keeps this pretty cool. So I think it does a great job at what it's supposed to do and it's probably one of the better inverters, if not the best inverter that I've tested at 3000 watts. That concludes my testing on the inverter. I'm gonna get it disconnected from the battery. Then I'm gonna grab some measurements and put it on the scales and see how much this thing weighs. 14 and a half by eight by three and a half. 10.2 pounds. And my final recommendation on the Tyco 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter is a definite buy. Now there are a couple things that I would like to upgrade. I would prefer that these uh, be side by side rather than over and under. The type C uh, port for your USB, I wish that was 100 watts versus 18 watts. And it has three uh, AC outlets on it. I just wish one of those or all three of those were 20 amp outlets versus 15 amp outlets. Now, most units come with either two, three or four and not every one of these come with 20 amp outlets, but I am seeing them on the newer um, upgrades on some of the other inverters. So I wish they would upgrade these to 20 amps. I do like that it has that ground connection right here that you can ground it to a chassis. And overall, this is a great inverter and I would definitely recommend it.